Welcome back. Yes, our guest for this morning. Her name is Omotunde Adebo Ali David. Uh, uh, she's a Nollywood actress, a Nigeria radio presenter. Uh, she hosted a radio program called um, Oga Madam. Madam. Yes, on Wazobia <laughs> FM. And of course, the later she joined Las Gidi FM. FM yeah. uh, yes, she's a mother. And of course, I'm talking about no other person than Lolo One. Oh. Oh. Oh, we bow. Welcome. <laughs> we bow. <laughs> we bow. <laughs> we are so great to our healing. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. It's an honor to be on the station this morning. How is everyone doing? Everyone is fine. We are fine. No. We, are fine. we are hanging on. We are hanging on. We are hanging on. That's the way to go. Know, it's the way to go. Know, we have to you keep, know, mm -hmm. you know, putting our focus on what is important. Yeah, right, true, you're right. true. How are you doing over there? How is life? How is life treating uh, ah. Lola One? Ah, life is great. I, I'm always winning, so why mm. not? Mm. Life is to mm -hmm. be lived and lived fully. Mm. <laughs> true, true, true. I like that part. She said, I'm always winning. winning. Yeah. Mm. No negativity vibes, you know, just. No negativity, yeah. just keep moving, keep yeah. moving. Most of the time, you know, a lot of us will say, they'll say wonderful things to us and we'll do everything in our power to say something negative. Oh, you're mm. beautiful. Me? Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. Yeah, I know they were lying. Lying. <laughs> The same energy we used to collect negativity, we should use to mm. collect positivity also. Mm. Mm. Nice one. Mm. Mm. This one, you're about to say <laughs> This one is deep. <laughs> this one is deep. Nice one. This one is deep. It, it's nice having you on the show, ma. It's nice having you on the show, ma. Very excited to be here. And you both look lovely. Yes. Ooh, I'm loving the get up, the dresses that's going on. Ooh, wow. Thank you. And the cap. Thank you. Oh, discuss that. Ah. Oh, 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 oh. We are bad like that. <laughs> <laughs> so um Lolo, we really need um we need to make use of this time having you on the show with us. Um can you describe your childhood to us? Let's know the real you. Your journey. Take us through the journey of uh, childhood. Yes. As a bear. <laughs> okay. All right. For me, I was a very independent child. I've been in boarding school from primary three. I, I've mm. always I've lived in boarding school. I was in boarding school all my life, so I grew up very independent. I would say that for the early years of my life, I was very tomboyish. That means I like to do what boys do. <laughs> I climb mm. trees. I, you know, I did my own regular jagadanga ways. It was fun <laughs> though, but you know, it taught me a lot of uh, a lot of independence uh, growing mm. up. And uh, for me. I think that's where the love for literature, the love for fantasy and, you know, stories and all those things that I do presently comes from. Because mm -hmm. when you have a lot of free time, it gave me the opportunity to daydream a lot. And that is mm -hmm. what I would say a lot of our youths are missing now. The ability to engage your mind and to see beyond the physical, you know. Mm -hmm. Half of the time when I was in boarding school, when my chores are done and I'm just all by myself, I would just mm. transport myself to another realm. I used to mm -hmm. write wonderful stories. I was one of the best literary students in my school. I rep I, was, mm. I went to an um, Anglican Girls Grammar School for my secondary school, Christ Apostolic mm -hmm. Church School for my primary school. And when I was in secondary school, I represented the school a lot in impromptu mm. speeches and debates. That was mm. my forte. You know, I mm. love impromptu speeches the most because I'm a naturally spontaneous person. That means I yeah. do best spontaneously. Give me a topic, mm. I will trash it. But sometimes when mm. I will prepare for things, sometimes it's not the best for someone like me. So in school, mm. I did a lot of, you know, drama. I did uh, a lot of writing. I, I was one of the best students in literature english mm. my own time you know my my secondary school my primary school was very fun and I, I engaged a lot with the outdoors oh okay. my god the jabode was where i schooled and the can girls grammar school jabode so you can imagine not like now that some schools there's no 
they don't even have grass not to talk mm. of trees and you know vegetation mm. i engage with nature a lot sometimes when you can't find me in my hostel you see me on a tree is that i'm on top of one mango tree or one tree <laughs> like that i'll just take a book and hang on the branches and just read and just enjoy nature you know that's how mm. i basically spent uh, my own uh childhood yes mm -hmm. and i was and a that, very competitive a... child especially in uh literature english you know we had a couple like three of us in school that we used to you know vie for the first position if i'm first mm. this them the guy is second the person is third you we used to do that to me. push ourselves <laughs> so much and i would say mm. that it helped me very very much to become the adult that i am i am now mm. Mm. You, you already said you're always winning yes you're always, yes. You're always winning <laughs> you already said that but i, I wanted winning. to yeah i wanted to get something you um you said you were into writing drama you represented your school yeah. in all these activities and all did you know did you know that you were going to um fall into this line of being a broadcaster an actor because you practiced law for three years yeah. before you delved into yes. broadcasting. broadcasting so have yes. you always known or while you were practicing law you just felt this is not for you well, yeah and let you me just, just let me just into, go yeah yeah you know, a lot of us, if we're true to ourselves, the picture of our future is already mm. with us. It's just what you choose to see. I would call myself a child of the two. I learned to mm. speak English from watching television when I was very mm. young. I loved to watch the television. Everything about television fascinated me. Mm. I love the language. I love the color. Ruth Benamazia up here. You know, we that grew up in my own time. If you didn't watch NTA News, what are you watching? I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so my father would make sure that, oh yes, we watched NTA News. So I used to think I was going to be like a newscaster when I grew mm. up. But you know, the seeds of our future is with us. It is yeah. what you choose to see. I would say that I'm a natural born entertainer. Mm. Give me the mic, I'm good. I can act, I can sing, I can dance. I love art, I love yeah. poetry. You know, yeah. everything in the art form is where I thrive. So when I actually mm. studied law, law is a wonderful thing to study for me. Yeah. It gave me a very, mm. it even gave me a more balanced foundation. Mm. Because being a lawyer, I know the legal implication of most of the things that we do. Yeah. When I was in law, when I studied law, when I wrote my project, I wrote my project on a neighboring right to copyright, which we call, mm. uh, uh, we call it neighboring rights. Yes. Mm. I wrote on the rights of a performer. That, that was what mm. my, the, my project in university was. So for you mm. to know that, if you ask yourself very critical questions now, the things that you will get to do is already with you. The only mm. thing is, are you really focusing on that talent that you have naturally mm. or you are looking at other people trying to become them instead of mm. you to harness the one that you have inside yeah. of you that is god given and that is mm. free to develop a lot of people mm. that are not growing right now is because they are not harnessing their natural talent mm. you see a lot of if you look at kenyans and people from the east africa they really excel in running Mm. Imagine if they spend their time trying to swim because they watch Michael Phelps. They would mm. have even they left their own natural talent to go and be investing in something that they are not good at. Mm. So I want to believe that that is what I did and that is why I'm here right now. Okay, amazing. Okay, nice one. <laughs> nice one. <laughs> okay, you like like you said, growing up, um, you know when when we are when we are a kid or a child, mm. we tend to drop into so many things. Mm, sure. Like you mentioned, you know, you could write, you're good in literature, you know, you love nature and all that. Then you knew that okay, uh watching NTA news, mm. this is something that I would like to do. At what point did you get into the industry, you know, professionally? Sure, Talking yeah. about radio, I think you started with radio. At what point did you find yes. your way professionally mm. into media? 
Ah, okay. I practiced law for about three years after school. You know, there's nothing you can do to your parents. They wanted me to be a lawyer, and I had to give them that honor. So I practiced law for about three years. Then it was at that point that I decided that there is more I can do. Mm. And I took a paradigm shift okay. from that after three years of practicing law. I can't remember the year at the moment uh, mm. <laughs> because, you know, time has passed a lot. But at mm. least I always tell myself one thing. I like to try things. Once you, if you don't give yourself the opportunity to experience something, you can't even know whether you are good or bad at it. So when mm. I finished practicing law, I knew I can be good as a lawyer, but I wanted to be the best at what I ever I chose to do. Mm. It was that time I knew that no, entertainment is what I wanted to do. And mm. because it's a it's a departure from what I studied, I had to leave and start my entertainment journey from the very beginning. When okay. I started out, I didn't even know what I wanted. All I knew is that I wanted to do entertainment. But you know, once we make some decisions, life will begin to orchestrate your path towards the right places. Mm, the first thing is. that came to mind was, okay, start going to TV stations, going to places. I came to Galaxy also. Ooh. <laughs> At that time, trying to secure a, a, a an opportunity to either become a presenter or something. It was then mm. I, I went to channels and I was mm. pointing and they said, oh, you have good diction, you can speak well, but you need a bit of training. That mm. was when they pointed me in the direction of Federal Radio Corporation Training School. I never knew okay. such a school existed. That was where wow. I did a course in basic presentation. And as they would say, the rest became history. I came out wow. as one of the best students in that in that cohort and I was giving contracts employment to Radio Nigeria immediately. Wow. I never thought of radio at first, but radio was what chose me. Ooh, <laughs> and that was how I started my radio journey. Mm. I first started with Radio Nigeria. From there I moved to Wazobia FM. From there I moved to Las Gidi FM. Then I did a little bit of consulting for Law FM and now mm. I'm a filmmaker. <laughs> so <laughs> you can see the journey. <laughs> Okay, then amazing. It's really amazing. <laughs> then, at what point did you discover your comedy talent? Oh, <laughs> thank you for bringing me back to that. <laughs> I always say, I think I was born humorous. I think I took my humor from uh, a little bit from my father's side and my mom. Wow! I, I said, wow. <laughs> comedy. I'll say comedy was just something I, you know, when you have so many talents, I you just say, okay, I'm going to try this out. While I was on Wazobi mm. FM, I had a colleague that were presenting our show together, Egos. He looked at me mm. one day and he said, Lolo, do you know you're so funny? I said, really? He said, let's do a comedy show. Hmm. And I was like, ah, stand-up comedy? I am not really, I don't know. But you know one thing I always tell myself? Until you try something, you don't know if you're going to fail or you're going to succeed. Yeah, oh, yeah, right. I said, right. you think so? And he said, yes. And I said, let's go, because I'm always <laughs> winning. And we had our first show together. We had a, a combination show at that time in Festac. And it was mm. sold out. I was like, wow, there's something here. Wow. OK. And that was what betted Oga Madame live on stage. Wow. From that year, wow. I started to host my own comedy show. And I did it for six years. I did mm. my own comedy show for six years. Then the last two years, uh, the last, I did it for five years. Then the last year, okay. I did a, a stage play called um, yeah. Alero. That was yeah. when I rested stage for a little while. I'm going back to it. It's just that I have mm. some other fish in my fry pan that I'm frying. Hey. That's why I <laughs> don't have to in the stage <laughs> and comedy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to find out, you know, what exactly you are frying in that your frying pan. Yes, <laughs> yes. We're, we're going to find yes. out because you tell us everything that you have in there. But before that, we'll take a short break. Back, welcome back. We're happy that you're still with us on Galaxy TV. And in case you're just tuning in, this is 
be my be guest on galaxy tv and of course this is whatsapp this is your favorite segment on galaxy tv yes mm -hmm. your favorite always always always, you know, always. <laughs> and i guess for this morning we've been having a, a sweet chat with them um, lolo one or gamada mm. <laughs> yeah, Lero, are you still there <laughs> Okay, so let's talk about let's talk about Adaku in in Jennifer's voice. Yes, uh, there was one. There was one. There was one episode. There was one episode. Jennifer was like Adaku, you change her for her. Okay. You said no. <laughs> no be Adaku. No be Adaku. <laughs> let's talk about your journey. You know, into Jennifer's diary. Sorry. I'm playing that role, Adaku. How, how was it like? Yeah. You know, I have to say big ups to Funke Akindele because of all the producers I know, she's one of the people I know that is a talent finder. I always call her yes. a talent finder. Funke has the eye for people and he knows, mm. she just knows how to pick people. And that's wow. another thing that we should learn. I told you about mm. all the passions I have. I find that a lot of young people these days, all we concentrate about on is money. I want mm. to make money. If money is the reason you do something, it can never last beyond the time. Mm -hmm. But if you are purposeful and you are filled with passion, you'll be able to last. Do you know mm -hmm. that the things that Funke saw me on were things I never earned in Kobo. I did a wow. stint with on AY's creep. I did a couple of episodes on one of his um, AY creep yes. series. Yes. And she yes, saw me yes. and said, Ah, this lady is so funny. Wow. And he came to one of my comedy shows too. And she's like, wow, this girl is crazy. And mm. he told me initially she had written the character for somebody else. But mm. every time she wanted to call that somebody else, she'd be reminded to call me. Wow. Now, why don't you call Lolo? Why don't you call Lolo? And she did call me one day, and the rest they would say is history. That is how I mm. got a dark character. And I, I, I played the character for like eight years uh, yes. on Jennifer's Diary. Hilarious character. People love Adaku for the fact that she has Wala and she can eat too much. Oh and she eats a lot. And she, she eats a lot. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and yes. I, I, I wish you compare that, that know, character with you. Adaku character has put my brand out there. I've done, mm. a, I've done TV before I did Adaku. I've done series. I've done a couple of things. But you know the regularity of Adapo, of mm. uh, Jennifer's Diary, and the ex and the reach made mm. the brand the brand global, because yeah. there's nowhere in the world you have Nigerians. <laughs> nowhere. I've been to London. I've been to some African countries that people will be like, "Oh my God, Adapo!" Mm. Even now <laughs> on the streets, people still call me Adapo every Adapu. time they see me. So we that's uh, my <laughs> Adapo <laughs> story. <laughs> We can't let we can't let Adaku go because Adaku want troublesome and Adaku eat a lot. Mm. But we hope that Adaku is yeah. not different from Lolo. Or is it the same, uh -uh. same character? <laughs> it's just like say you know, when your colleagues ask you that question, I find it hard to answer. It's just like mm. telling me that Precious of Zopo is a witch. <laughs> we we play characters. That is the beauty of yes. being actors. I have yes. played other roles as size as Adaku Adaku that has Adaku. nothing yes. to do with food. I have mm. shot three movies. I shot two movies of my own. One mm. I did my first movie, When Love Is Not Enough. And funny enough, I like to do indigenous movies. When wow. Love Is Not en When Love Is Not Enough is a contemporary Yoruba story about multiple sclerosis. That was my mm. first foray into filmmaking. Wow. <coughs> After that, Sorry. I did Deja Vu. Deja Vu was another indigenous Yoruba story that is presently mm. on Netflix. If you search Deja, Deja Vu out on Netflix, you will see mm. my second work there. Right mm. now, I'm a, uh, I have another series I shot this year called Madame Felicia. And I played the lead wow. character in that, wow. in, that, in that series. And she's British. Half Nigerian, half wow. British. So there's so much <laughs> you have not even seen about me as an actor yes. or a producer so adaku is just like my foundation that i've you know enjoyed you know, over the years yeah but now you know. i'm building more on the on oh, my wow. person on my brand wow. as an actor and as a producer 
Yeah. We're excited, right? Me personally, I think I'm excited about that. The, uh, the, my, I'm just. But have you like, seen? Have you seen my? Did you come? To, have you seen my two movies? Not no, yet. Not but yet. I think we'll do that immediately. We'll, we'll see, we'll I should. That. I will we'll just that. use a uh, broom and hit your head. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I, yes, you have the right to do that. Yeah, you are. You I, I wanted to get right. your thought on something. I wanted to get your thought on something. You just made a statement that caught my attention. You said um, there are a lot of things that we do not know no, about, about you, you yet, yes. as an actor, a filmmaker, producer. and a producer. Yeah. No. What's your take on boxing a um, particular set of actors? Like, if a movie comes up, and you see someone's name, you see an actor's name, immediately you know, you know the character, the, the role, the mm. role the person wants to do. Now, is that the fault from directors or the fault from the actors not wanting to try out other, other roles, roles so that they, they can show people their potentials? What's your take on that? Thank you so much. I like that for this question very much. It's many things. You know, in Nigeria, mm. our film industry is growing. A lot of us benchmark yeah. ourselves against Hollywood. And the budget of Hollywood and Nigeria and Nollywood is not the same. You know that between roles, some actors do not even have time to mm. prepare. We have a group of, a crop of actors, you as a filmmaker. If mm. I'm going to prepare an actor to totally change a character, mm. I'm not, I can't even afford to pay that actor. You know some Hollywood mm actors they will be what they want to play a character in 2024 do you know that they are already investing in them to re, to play that character from about this yeah. year budget sometimes before because our film budget is not as extensive as they are so as a as a writer or a producer or a filmmaker you are thinking what makes it easy for you oh this character is already a comic character let me just play the character as that because if you want an evolution of characters it takes a lot and can we afford mm. to put an actor in that role there's a, an actor mm. abroad i know that played like an hiv uh patient do you know they had to put that actor on diet for like six diet, months so that can, yeah. wow wow so wow. that he can be ready for that role but in nigeria mm. it's not easy like that but kudos to us because this industry all of us are thriving on now we started mm. with the barest minimum and we are scaling up every day every day so for stereotyping sometimes it's uh, i would say no, nobody is at fault everybody has a bit bits and pieces some actors okay. don't want to leave their roles they don't want to leave mm. the, where they have carved the niche if you call them mm. for action pieces they'll say they like comedy and they will not want to do mm. that Oh, if you call someone that are doing natural, they say I'm not funny. Mm. So sometimes it's you know you can't really say this is why or not, but there are many things that can make that happen. But for me as an actor, I know I've rejected some roles because they just want to replicate Tadako. Mm. And I'm like, I'm an actor. There are other things I can do. And I've given myself yes. the opportunity to be versatile. So mm. I think actors too should learn to expand themselves some are just comfortable they like the fact that they play them as plastic always playing a janitor or a, a security mm -hmm. man and they just make that their niche but they for me as an actor <laughs> i mm -hmm. want to expand myself to be able to showcase that i have capacity i have seen kule remy play action i've seen him play yeah. romance i've seen him play mm -hmm. epic I've seen, yeah. and there are many actors Comedy, in that, yeah. in that uh, light. So it yes. depends on you. You can break away from stereotype. Yes. You have to be very, very conscious about breaking yes. away. It's not like me. I've spoken Pidgin for a long time on radio. Do you know it took a lot for people to accept that I can speak good English? Can you imagine? Wow. <laughs> I brought to <laughs> events and everybody say, ah, la, la, they talk to Pidgin now. What did they do you? And I'm like, okay, <laughs> I can speak Pidgin. But at the same time, I think of people you vote too. But you know, Nigerians don't like what they like. It okay. is you as an actor that will keep pushing the boundaries, pushing the envelope yeah. that no, I will not be boxed in. And that is mm. how even potential producers will look at you and say, wow, this woman can do more. Let's try her with something else. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. 
I, I think I agree with you that um, the actors need to do a lot Lots, and so yeah. that you know what directors I can actually you play this role. Yes, yeah. yes, I think I think the work has to do with the the actor. It should yes, be, um, so that you're not boxed up. But I'm going to ask you um, two questions, <laughs> and the first one I'll ask you is, you know, coming from radio, uh, it's a, it's a different industry when we talk about movie making. You know, we have it's, it's yeah. another ball game. It's an, another another life entirely. entirely. So let's talk about the things that you face there. And few things that you feel that they can actually do better in terms of movie production. Mm -hmm. What are the things that you feel? Okay, you know what? I think we can do this better. Mm -hmm. Then the second question I'll ask you is: based on the movies that you produced, are they profitable? Did you make your money back? All right, let me start from: Did I make my money back? My first mm -hmm. movie, I did not make him buy. <laughs> unfortunately <laughs> for me. He premiered, he went to the cinemas during COVID, just at the beginning when wow. COVID hit us. Wow. So it was a terrible experience. Oh my God. My resources wow. were tied. The distributor I used was terrible. You know, wow. it was just a terrible experience. But it was a beautiful story. Uh, and uh, it depends. That's why I tell you that money cannot be the only reason you are doing something. Mm -hmm. Right now, I have made it my goal. I said to myself that Omotunde is a super creative. And I want mm -hmm. to tell authentic African stories. Like, mm -hmm. I grew up with my mother telling us stories. Tales by Moonlight. Yeah. And, and that is how our, our originality as African were, was built. Yoruba will say, Bomode o baba ito. Aba roba. Aba roba. Aroba de ni baba ato. That means that we had our history, our culture, who we are as a people, from from mouth to mouth. So now mm -hmm. that was then. Now that we have, we even have a more a better medium, which is filmmaking. We can keep telling our stories that my own children can watch a movie. We watch a, I still watch a wounded wow. when I was growing up, mm -hmm. and now in another twenty years. The youth are the younger people coming up behind us are going to watch what we we put down and they're going to keep trying to better what we have put down mm -hmm. and that's how like how, that, how do you learn korean culture i, I love korean movies i'm a k-pop you know person <laughs> i learned their culture from there i learned their food from there so me too i want to sell nigeria mm -hmm. let people watch our film and say wow so these are these are nigerians are Mm. That's how we sell who we are as a people, and that is one of my passion or my goals or what drives me as an African filmmaker presently. Mm. About uh, uh, what else did you ask? I'm trying the, to the answer the profitability. The what, what then the my second movie was a huge okay. success. Wow. My second movie it did well at the box office. It went on. It's on Netflix presently. In fact, my movie was three on Netflix platform. It was number one for three weeks, going to four. Wow! 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 And wow. I am very proud of myself. 